Hello, here is a video going over section 6.4, the dot product. After you are done watching this video, you should be able to find the dot product of two vectors, determine if two vectors are orthogonal, as well as solving work problems. So first and foremost, what is the dot product? The dot product is an operation in which you take two vectors and it results in a scalar. So a scalar is a regular number. So when I take these two vectors and work through the dot product, it's the result is going to be a regular number. So the formula for the dot product is, let's see, you have two vectors. Vector A is A1 and A2. Vector B is B1 and B2. And if I want to take the dot product of the two, that's this, um, what that means is I'm going to look at the corresponding components. So for example, I'm going to take A1 and that is going to be multiplied by B1 and A2 is going to be multiplied by B2. Okay, so A1, B1 plus A2, B2, and that's going to result in a regular number. Now the other thing we're going to look at is the theorem of the dot product, and that allows us to find the angle in between two vectors. It is going to be this formula right here. Um, I'm gonna make a note that the numerator is the dot product. So we would have to find the dot product between the two vectors. And the denominator, the denominator has two magnitudes. So it is the magnitudes of both vectors. So you have magnitude of A and magnitude of B. And then since we're going to solve for an angle, you would do the inverse cosine, but that'll make a lot more sense once I'm doing that in the context of a problem. So here we go. Given the two vectors 8i minus 3j and 2i minus 7j, find the dot product and the angle in between. So first of all, I'm going to take my vectors and I'm going to write it in um, the other form, not the ij form, but the what I like to call wedge form. So I'm going to say vector a is 8, negative 3, and vector b is 2, negative 7. So I like to see it in this form as opposed to the other one, um, just my personal preference. And then I'm going to do a dot b because I want to find the dot product. So for the dot product, I'm taking a1 and b1 and multiplying them. So that's the 8 and the 2. So I have 8 times 2 plus, and then a2 and b2. So negative 3 and negative 7. So plus negative 3 times negative 7. Now, if you'll notice, when I first wrote out my vectors, I stacked them on top of each other, A and B. Um, that way I had my um, horizontal components lined up and my vertical components lined up. So right on top of each other. That'll help me figure out what numbers I'm going to multiply um, within my dot product. So that gives me 16 plus 21, which is 37. So for this particular problem, it asks you to find the dot product, which we just did. It also asks you to find the angle in between. So in order to find the angle in between, there's two other pieces of information that we need. We need to find the magnitude of A as well as the magnitude of B. So magnitude is going to be the square root of A1 squared plus A2 squared. I'm going to go ahead and leave this in radical form. So this is the square root of 64 plus 9, which is 73. I'm going to do the same thing for vector B. So magnitude A1 squared plus A2 squared. Oh, that's B. B1 squared and B2 squared. And that gives me 4 plus 49 is 53. All right, so now I'm going to follow the formula to find the angle in between. So that's cosine of theta equals the dot product, which is 37, divided by the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this expression, that entire thing, and put it into my calculator so I can get a decimal approximation. I'm going to use alpha y equals, so I can get that fraction bar on my TA-84. So I have 37 on top, 
square root of 73 and square root of 53 on the bottom. I'm going to go to four decimal places, so 0 0.5948. And then to finally figure out my theta, I'm going to do inverse cosine because you always do the inverse trig function to be able to find an angle measurement. And for this angle measurement, we're going to look at it in degrees. So double check that your calculator is in degree mode. And then we are going to do second cosine, so inverse cosine of 0.5948. And that gives us approximately 53.5 degrees. All right, so we found the dot product and the angle in between. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at is something called orthogonal vectors. So orthogonal is just a fancy word for perpendicular. So you'll see the word perpendicular in parentheses. So anytime you hear me say the word orthogonal, it's the same meaning as a perpendicular, which of course means the angle in between is 90 degrees. So the theorem on orthogonal vectors tells us that two vectors are orthogonal or perpendicular if their dot product is zero. So that's the most important part. Dot product has to be zero for two vectors to be deemed orthogonal. So for this example, it says show that the two vectors are orthogonal. Essentially what I wanna do is I want to check to see if the dot product equals zero. And if it does equal zero, then that means they are orthogonal. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the dot product of our two vectors. So a dot b equals a1 times b1, so six times negative four, plus a2 times b2, so two times 12. That gives me negative 24 plus 24, which is zero. So sure enough, these two vectors are orthogonal because the dot product equals zero. All right, the next thing we're going to look at are the types of word problems that you would use the dot product for. So um, this is dealing with work word problems. So before I do that, let's talk about some definitions. So a force is the physical entity used to describe a push or a pull. Um, a vector's magnitude is described as the constant force. Work is the work done by a constant force A as its point of application moves along vector B. So this right here is a formula that we are going to use. Um, your work is going to be the dot product of the force vector and the position vector. I actually like to rewrite this formula instead of A dot B, I wanna do F dot P. So that is my force vector and my position vector. All right, so let's look at this in a couple scenarios. So a child pulls a wagon along level ground by exerting a force of 18 pounds on a handle that makes a 40 degree angle with the horizontal. Find the work done by pulling the wagon 150 feet. So let's go ahead and start by drawing a picture because it's always helpful to have a visual. Here's a little wagon. Here's the handle. Here's the kid pulling the wagon who has a very long neck. So pulling the wagon, I'm actually gonna fix that because his long neck is gonna bother me. <laughs> Let me fix that. All right. And let's give him some hair. And he's a happy guy because he's pulling his wagon. Okay, so he's pulling the wagon. Let's see, the force is 18 pounds. So this right here, we're gonna say that that is 18 pounds. And the angle that um, the handle makes is 40 degrees. So this angle right here is 40 degrees. And we want to find the work done by pulling the wagon 150 feet. So we're taking this wagon in this direction, 150 feet. Okay, so now that we have the visual, let's go ahead and start talking about the force and the position vector, because we need to find both of those in order to calculate the work. So the force vector, 
I am going to find by taking the magnitude of the force. So the magnitude of the force is 18 pounds, but keep in mind that it is being um, pulled at a particular angle of 40 degrees. So when I change that to a vector, I wanna do the magnitude, which was 18, and then cosine of the angle in which it is being pulled. So 18 cosine of 40 and 18 sine of 40. And that is the force vector. The other piece I need is the position vector. So my position is going to talk about position. It's gonna talk about what you actually wanna do. So in this case, we're pulling the wagon horizontally 150 feet. Now, this kid is on level ground, so that means when he is pulling, he is going straight across 150 feet. He doesn't have any vertical movements whatsoever, so he's not moving up at all. He's not on an incline. It's just level ground, 150 feet. So that means for my position vector, my horizontal component is 150, and my vertical component is 0 because he's not moving up or down at all. He's just moving horizontally 150 feet. Now to actually find the work, I want to take the dot product of these two vectors. So I'm going to multiply these two together. That's my A1, A2, or A1, B1. And I'm going to multiply these two together. That's B1, A2, and B2. Sorry, <laughs> and then I wanna add those two pieces together. So just like what we did with the previous example. So I have um, 18 cosine of 40 times 150 plus 18 sine of 40 times zero. And I'm gonna go ahead and put that into my calculator. Uh, 18 cosine of 40 times 150 plus 18 sine of 40. Now the second piece over here, that's just gonna equal zero since you're just multiplying by zero. Uh, but I'm just gonna put everything in the calculator anyway, because why not? And I end up with 2068.3. Now work does have units. So your units is going to be your force, your force in the position unit. So in this case, we're traveling by uh, feet and our um, force was in pounds. So my units for this is foot pounds, which sounds very weird, but just go with it. Typically in science, when you're talking about work, you'll see the unit joules for work. Um, but in this case, we're using foot pounds. Okay. So for this scenario, our child was on level ground. Now let's look at a scenario where the child and the handle are both at an incline. So a child pulls a wagon along, wait, that's the same problem. Whoops, maybe I don't have the other problem. I don't, well, I guess that's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess that's the end of my video going over section 6.4 because I don't actually have the other scenario in which everything's at an incline. So forget that I even mentioned that. All right, adios.